update. Am I the a-hole for not telling my ex about our child? Original post. I was 18 when I got pregnant with my daughter, 9 female. I was young and dumb, I admit that. Her father and I broke up before I found out. We were high school sweethearts. At a time, we were both figuring out college, and I knew that if I told him, he wouldn't go to the Ivy League school he was accepted into. So, I didn't tell him during pregnancy. He heard rumors but never asked. But when the baby was born, I tried to tell him and he didn't believe me. He blocked me in everything and I just decided to provide for her without his help. I bring my daughter everywhere. And this particular day, we went to Target. I'm walking down the shampoo aisle with my daughter and when I looked up, I saw my ex's mom. I have never lied to my daughter about who her father was or his parents. She has seen pictures. When she was little and she asked where he was, I explained college. And when she got older, I never painted him as the bad guy. I've always just told her mommy made adult decisions too young. My daughter is the spitting image of her father. So there's no denying it's his child. So once she saw her, she had a face like she knew something. It asked me how old my daughter was. She told me she had heard rumors but didn't think they were true. Once I told her, I saw her face put the connection together. I explained I wanted to contact him but didn't have a way to. I didn't bother telling her that I tried when she was born. She understood and asked if she could tell him. I said, of course. Apparently, he's been living a couple hours away, which is why I never ran into him and they moved a few towns over. My ex called and invited me to his parents' house for dinner tomorrow with our daughter. Do I go? His new girlfriend is blowing up my social media calling me an a -hole. She says I'm only telling him now so they break up and how I'm a horrible mother for not telling him sooner. As if I don't feel bad enough that my daughter has missed out this long. My daughter wants to meet her dad and she understandably has questions. Now for the top comments. But you did tell him. It's not your fault he refused to believe you and cut off lines of communication. Besides, you didn't seek him out nine years later. You were shopping with your child when his mother noticed you. You're definitely not the a-hole and the new girlfriend is way out of line for contacting you at all. I am giving the girlfriend some grace. I'm sure it wasn't easy to find out your boyfriend has a child you never knew about. That is very generous of you, but it's not appropriate of her to make baseless accusations against you. You were just minding your business in Target. You didn't ask for any of this. Just trying to buy some shampoo. This thread is right. You did try. And you need to make that clear to both his girlfriend and family that he chose to block you when you told him. Don't back down. Keep bringing it up and defending yourself. Otherwise, they'll decide it's easier to blame you. Not the a-hole. You did tell him and he proceeded to ghost you. I can't blame his current girlfriend either because she's probably not getting the whole truth. Your ex is a huge a-hole. I'm sure she might not be, but I think he's handling it the best he can. I'm sure this wasn't easy on his family either. I think you need to have a conversation with him slash his parents away from your daughter before everyone meets. Not a hole. Your title is misleading. You absolutely told him and he refused to believe you entirely. Ignore the girlfriend. It's not about her. Hopefully dad wants to be a part of your daughter's life. And hopefully he understands that he has a commitment to her. It sounded like he does on the phone. He really is a great person. We just made dumb young decisions. Don't rush it. If he is interested in a relationship with daughter, make sure it's supervised. He's a stranger to her, and he's never parented a child. Also, make sure you protect yourself and child, so she does not get taken from you. And now for the update. I took everyone's advice to ask my ex to meet for coffee before dinner. He said he'd be happy to get coffee tomorrow morning so we can have the adult conversations without her there. He also wanted to talk to me anyway, to know what she liked so she knew what to talk to her about. I also let him know I didn't want to cause drama, but I sent him screenshots of what his girlfriend has been saying. He let me know that's not acceptable, and he'll be handling that immediately and I will not be hearing from her again. He also reiterated he will not be having her meet our daughter anytime soon. I know everyone is also asking about how involved or consistent he'd like to be. When I spoke to him earlier about dinner, we did speak about this. He'd like to start small and build their relationship slowly, starting with helping with science homework. Our daughter struggles with science and he was a biology major, over FaceTime or in person depending on our daughter's comfort level. I think it's a great way to start small. Update 2. My ex and I met for coffee. It actually went really well. There were no big emotions, we both just talked it out. He wants to be involved with our daughter's life and feels badly that he's missed out on so many years. 
We talked about her favorite things, favorite foods, favorite places, favorite books and movies. I even told him some of the ways she was a lot like him growing up. He does want to apologize to her directly when he meets her. He said he wished things had gone differently back then, but we both decided we need to forgive each other to move forward for her. He asked if she had a father figure right now, a spouse of mine or current significant other, as he wanted to make sure we were on the same page when he met her and I explained that's not the case. He also did show me the messages where he told his parents and his girlfriend what actually happened nine years ago. He told them I'm not completely to blame and I let him know he isn't either. We have agreed our daughter doesn't need to hear the whole version of events. But we do owe her an apology for making really big decisions that affected her life for so long. I guess we'll see how dinner goes. Update on dinner Prior to dinner, I let my daughter know that if she wanted to leave early, we could. Or if she felt uncomfortable at all to let me know. I also told her if she didn't want to say anything in front of anyone, sometimes kids don't want to hurt other people's feelings, that if she asked me for lotion, I would know that meant she wanted to leave. On our way there, she did ask if it was okay if she called him dad or if she would call him by his name, and I told her that her dad and I talked about that and she can call him whatever she's comfortable with. We went there and it went really well. We brought some pictures of her growing up and my ex's mom went out and bought one of our daughter's favorite books for her to read so that they could talk about it. I could tell my daughter was a little nervous at first, not knowing what to expect, but that very quickly changed. They had bought a small activity for them to do with her after dinner, which she loved. Her dad and I apologized to her together for making decisions that affected her life this long. We promised her to work on making sure she had a good relationship moving forward with both of us, because we know her heart is big enough for all of her family. At the end of the night, my ex's mom actually brought out a box that had all our high school memories inside. I didn't realize she had kept any of it. A jewelry box he bought me, a couple of charms and bracelet he had bought me, pictures, his handkerchief from prom, and our old promise ring. She was really excited to see a small glimpse from our past. Her dad even told her she could have the items once she's older, which for her meant a lot. She's a very emotional and sentimental child. They talked about how he's going to help her with some homework if she wants, and is planning on moving back around here to be closer to her. He even volunteered to help with her first science fair if that was okay, which made me sad for a split second and then I remembered I've had nine years of firsts with her so he can have this one. All in all, I think everything is going really well. Also, apparently the girlfriend is out of the picture. I don't know the details, but I know she said some things when he confronted her about the messages she sent me and it's got ugly fast. On the way home, she was so excited she couldn't stop talking about dad and grandma and grandpa. It made my heart happy she had so much fun. I know some people were asking about child support. Him and I had a conversation around it while she was spending a few minutes with her grandparents. He volunteered to pay child support. I've been paying for her things on my own for so long that I told him I think it would be more beneficial for him to help me with things going forward and to contribute the rest to her college fund. That way, the money is going into her future. I do have an appointment set up with her therapist tomorrow just so she can talk to her about it and everything. Dad is also going to start occasionally going to therapy with her too. I do it periodically as well, so we thought it would be beneficial. Final update. For everyone asking for updates, our daughter's first day of school is coming up. Dad and grandparents are coming to my house on her first day of school for pictures. She called and asked them to come, and no one hesitated to take the morning off of work. About time, a post where both parents involved are communicative and willing to do what's best for their kid. Kudos to both. I was reading this and I was waiting for someone to be an unreasonable a-hole. And other than a girlfriend, it just didn't come? What is this? I'm not used to people being mature, emotionally intelligent and reasonable. I was so worried at the start. This has to be one of the contenders for best adult conflict resolution. Agree. It could have went poorly considering they are all in their 20s and clearly the ex-girlfriend was too. But they all handled it so maturely. Am I the only one confused about why he wouldn't believe she'd had his child to begin with when she first told him? It's a pretty easy proof. Probably because he didn't want a child then? That if he blocked her, it wouldn't be true. He could simply go back to his life and ignore it. But it's different when your mom tells you about this kid and you are in your late 20s. You can't ignore your mother who wants to have a relationship with her granddaughter, one your son knew about and decided to ignore. Not saying that he didn't do anything wrong, but at least he is willing now. And grandparents are also very willing to have her in their life and make a huge effort. 
Whilst I am glad that things seem to be working out too far, I am disturbed that Opie is assuming so much of the blame for not pursuing her ex-boyfriend and forcing him to acknowledge his child. She made some efforts, which he rebuffed. I would say the blame was 5% the mother's fault and 95% on the father. Next story, am I the a-hole for not wanting to take a DNA test? My 32 female dad passed away when I was a little baby. He was in a car accident with his pregnant female subordinate, who was also his longtime mistress. She did survive the crash but lost the baby and ended up in an almost vegetative state. She's still alive. My parents had me after eight years of marriage after dealing with years of infertility. My dad was rich. He came from old money. And while married to my mother, made his own fortune. My mom came from humble beginnings and they had an arranged marriage. While they were married, my dad was in charge of the finances. And when he died, everything went to my mom. She married my dad's younger brother a few years later, had my siblings, and they're still happily married. We had a very happy childhood. And my grandparents, dad's parents who have since passed, were very involved. I had an extremely privileged upbringing. Now here's where I might be the a-hole. A girl claiming to be my half-sister, my dad's mistress's daughter, has contacted me saying that her mom is on her last legs and that she's trying to get some money for the hospital bills. She's two years older than me and claims that she's my dad's daughter and is entitled to my family's money. I have refused to take a DNA test. She has now threatened to take me to court. I refuse to meet her or discuss this issue. Her family is now harassing me and they tell me that I'm trying to steal her money and that she's my dad's firstborn child. When I told my mom about this, she told me to ignore her and go on with my life. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole, but I disagree with your mom. Contact a lawyer rather than ignore it. If the family's harassing you, this is more than a casual scam. Agreeing here, call a lawyer. You have no idea what's brewing. There could be many things at play and it's best to get proper advice to get ahead of it. Depending on where you live, there are probably statutes of limitations that will dictate how long someone has to sue for damages because of an accident, or how long someone legally has to contest a will or sue an estate for child support payments. A lawyer is going to be the expert on this. A lawyer will also be able to help you navigate no contact slash restraining orders if the harassment gets to a criminal level. Also, block them for peace of mind, but don't delete anything. Don't delete texts, social media DMs and posts, voicemails, call logs, etc. This is evidence if you do need to go to court over the harassment. When in doubt, lawyer out. Not day home. I don't think her court case has any merit. I highly doubt any court would compel you to take a DNA test. A lawyer would be a better judge of whether there is merit in the claim. For what it's worth, they don't need the Opie's DNA. Her uncle slash stepdad or any one of the siblings would do. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my husband that his mom is pregnant? I recently found out that my husband's mom is pregnant. She didn't tell me directly. Probably wouldn't have wanted me to know as we don't get along at all. But we were on an outing for a mutual family member's birthday, and I heard her whinging to an usher that they needed to bend the rules and let her back in her seats because she is pregnant. And that's why she got up. I immediately felt sick to my stomach. My husband and I do not keep secrets. And I felt like I had to tell him, but it also felt wrong. The thing is, if I didn't tell him and he ever found out I knew, he would feel so betrayed. I ended up pulling her aside at the end of the night and letting her know that I knew and that I felt I had to tell him. She told me she wasn't ready and then told me she had no plans of telling him. Maybe until the baby was born. WTF. I told her I was going to have to tell him and she began to cry. She said she knew he would take it badly and feel he was being replaced since she hasn't talked to him in a while. And she said she's having a lot of weird feelings about not wanting him near the baby, but she thinks it's hormonal and will go away. She said she's even going to therapy to get into a place she can talk to him again. And please don't tell him. They used to be close, but she hates me with a passion and it has ruined their relationship. I said I was sorry, but I just don't keep secrets from my husband. And she called me a freaking stupid witch and ran off crying. I told my husband and he did not take it well at all. He called her and there was a massive fight. And now mother-in-law is telling everyone I'm evil and that I betrayed her. The family's pretty split about it if he had a right to know or not. Not day home. Potential plot twist? She's not pregnant at all and lied to the usher so she could break the rules. That was my first thought too. Everyone sucks here. 
Mom and husband are in a dynamic that I'm not even going to touch. But there are problems. And obviously he stuck you in there somehow, which is wrong. That being said, you are textbook meddling. Let them hash out their own mess. How would he possibly ever know you heard something? Who knows if she was even telling the truth? What do you even gain or lose by getting involved? This is a ridiculous mess. Your whole family sounds like a drama magnet, to be honest. Added to Dwed, people don't seem to understand how it's meddling to run up to mother-in-law and start interrogating her about the pregnancy. Like, um, why is that your business? My husband can read my face when no one else can. He'd find out then look at me for support, and he'd know I knew without me saying a word. And I know this because we were in a similar situation but with his sister. Yeah, some of us are bad liars with no poker face. I resent when I'm made to keep secrets, and I don't want to be dragged into it. Mother-in-law should not be blurting things out to random strangers if she doesn't want people